Okay, guys, let's move on and let's talk about namespaces and auto loading. Okay, what is namespace in general in PHP? Imagine the following example that you are creating an application. In your application, you have the following classes you have email class, you have person class, and you have order class. And you want to uh, use email sending package, which is a third party package. And that package also has email class. And you want to install that package in your project and use it for email sending. You simply cannot do this because you have a name collision of classes. You have email class declared and the third party package also has email class declared. And that is that was big problem years ago, but namespaces can solve this problem. What you simply need to do is that create an app namespace and put all your classes inside app namespace. Okay, so you create, you move your email class into app namespace, and its identifier now is not email, just email. Its identifier, the class's identifier, is app backslash email. And the same thing happens for person and order. Okay, your class name is now app backslash email, app backslash person, and app backslash order. And now you can easily install third parties email uh, class in your in your application because you won't have um, name collision. One is called email. Second one is called app email. OK, I hope this makes sense. So we need to do now the same thing and let's create namespaces in the PHP store. OK, so here I have opened index.php from auto loading folder and on the right side I have opened that auto loading folder. And now let's create email and person classes. OK, so I'm going to create right here email class. And let's remove this and I'm going to give it a namespace now. OK, so this is this email class now is declared in the global namespace. So I'm going to give it a namespace up. So this is the way how we can give namespace. OK, namespace up. Let's create another class, call it person. And the PHP Storm detected that we had already email class with up namespace and it created the person class inside the up namespace also. OK, so let's uh, let's do like this. So I'm going to create also up folder and move both of the classes right there. OK. So in the index PHP now, I want to use that classes. So first of all, I need to use, I need to call require once to include that class code. And then I can use an instances, I can create instances from this class. Okay, for example, email equals new email. And here is the thing. So that is the class's fully qualified name. OK, creating an instance uh, just like this won't work. And if we if we just uh, try to see the result in the browser, that that is an error. Uncode error class email not found. OK, that's because uh, now the class name is app email. And whenever we want to use that class, we need to use with app email. OK, so that's that's the rule what you need to remember. And here that first uh, forward slash is kind of optional. OK, so again, this topic uh, is explained really well in my object oriented PHP playlist. So definitely check out the playlist. There are some scenarios about namespaces and I have like a full 30 minutes video, I think, about namespaces uh, and definitely check out um, and you can find the link uh, as always in the video description. OK. So this is the one way how we can create an instance of the email class. And let's, by the way, print something in the constructor to make sure that it's creating an instance. OK, so echo email class. OK, let's put beer and email class. So let's move on in index PHP and I'm going to show you a second way how we can use that uh, email class okay so if I uh, have to create an instances of email class multiple times probably I need to use the use operator okay so I say use up email class in this file and whenever I need to create an instance of the email I just can use email because I have used it inside the class and now I can access it with that email name 
Okay, so I'm going to save this, refresh the browser, and I see email class three times. The same thing basically happens about the person. Okay, so, so the person is also declared under namespace app, and whenever I need to use, I need to use with either use operator, use app person, or when I create an instance, uh, I need to use equals new uh, app backslash person. Either one of these, either this way or that way. Okay. So uh, now imagine this scenario that your application has multiple classes, not just two, but 10, 20, maybe 100 if your application gets large. So whenever you need to use one particular class, the email class, for example, in like a 20 different files, you have to always require, make sure that the email class is included. You have to write that require once and then you start using it, okay? That's why Composer was created. Composer is a tool which gives you, which solves you two main problems. One is auto-loading, so all these classes uh, will be auto-loaded whenever you start using it. And the second advantage is that it's also package management tool, so you can easily install someone else's third-party packages in your project. Okay, let's go ahead and let's install Composer. Okay, so here is my uh, new installed Windows, and I'm going to type there Composer. And go to the download. You can click on the Composer's main page and then go to the download. And in download section, you will see that Composer Setup Exe. Okay, so let's click that. It will download that Composer Setup Exe. And uh, before we install, let me show you that it's not installed and how, how it actually works. Okay, so we need to open CMD and type there Composer. Okay. So Composer is not recognized as an internal or external command, okay, because we don't have it installed. Now, let's start installing that package. Okay, we just need to follow the instructions, nothing special, so it's automatically detected where the PHP was installed. That's important, so Composer runs with PHP, so it needs to know where the PHP executable file is located, okay? So we just follow this, uh, just next, and here it is, it detected the PHP version in the exe file, and let's install. Okay, so it uh, it was actually installed, and let's open CMD once again, and type there Composer. And here we go, it gave us some kind of output. And these are the commands that the Composer supports. Of course, I'm not going to cover all of them, we're going to simply see a couple of them um, in our project. Okay, so let's get back to our PHP Storm and use that Composer command, which we have already uh, installed. Okay, so since we have successfully installed Composer, we need to navigate to the project folder and create a Composer JSON right here. Okay, so here is my auto loading folder, and I'm gonna create Composer JSON right here. I will explain what is Composer JSON in a second. Okay, so let's open that place. So I'm gonna copy that file path and navigate right there. Okay, so we are in auto loading uh, area. So I'm gonna run right here Composer init. That will ask me a couple of questions. What's the package name? I'm going to hit enter on all of this. What's the package description? What's, who is the author? Minimum stability and some of the stuff. And I'm going to hit enter on all of this. And that will give me Composer JSON right here. That Composer JSON is the configuration file for your application, for your project. Okay, so uh, we give some, whenever we create Composer JSON, we need to give some unique name of our package if we are going to publish that package and uh, make it available for others. Okay, so here is the uh, my name, which I actually I'm not going to publish it. Here are some other information, but uh, that also Composer will also uh, give us possibility to enable auto loading. Okay, so here we need to write. Uh, 
auto load auto load equals uh, PSR4 uh, which is an object and inside there we're gonna write the namespace name and on which folder that namespace is mapped so I'm gonna write here uh, namespace will be up and this will be mapped into the app folder okay so under app folder all of the classes will be under app namespace okay let's save this and go to the terminal we need the terminal and we need to run composer update okay so that will need to update some auto loading files Okay, yeah, I missed one important thing. In the app, we need to put there uh, backslashes, okay? So we, we actually need to put here backslash, but as far as single backslash cannot put there, we need two backslashes. Okay, so that's like this. And let's save this and run Composer Update. Okay, generating auto load files. That's cool, let's have a look. So it created that vendor folder and that fo vendor folder contains the auto load PHP and that file is basically responsible to load classes whenever we want to use this. Okay, now if we uh, go to the index PHP and comment that require once lines and save that file and refresh the browser, we still see that uh, app email cannot be found and that happens because we need to simply require just one file and that one file will be vendor autoload php okay so that autoload php is responsible to include all other classes what we're going to use even if they there are hundreds or thousands of classes that autoload php will handle all of them and require but we need to require that autoload php and let's save this and see the result in the browser and here we go we don't need that require once anymore we can create as many classes as we want in the app folder and then we can just use them with either use operator like this or we can just write app person just like this okay so that's all about auto loading what you need to know, again, check out my full playlist about object-oriented PHP. You can find the link in the video description or in the top right corner of the screen. And that's all about auto-loading. Composer is the tool which is used in every modern PHP framework or uh, CMS. So, because, as I said, it fixes two main problems. One is auto-loading, that we, we don't have to write require or require once hundreds times if we have 100 crowds in our application and second one is that it also fixes the dependency management problem okay which we haven't mentioned yet let's imagine the case that now we want to install a third-party package in our auto loading folder okay there should be a way for this let's go to the packagist.org which is the file where uh, PHP packages are registered. Let's go to the uh, browse and here we see uh, like a couple of packages. Here we see new packages and there will be some uh, popular ones. For example, monologue. I want to install that monologue. That's basically uh, a package which is which handles the sending log uh, log text into like files or sockets or in any other places. Okay, so and here is the installation uh, installation guide. So we need to install it with Composer. Okay, so we have seen one comment uh, one command of the Composer which is called Composer init and that created that Composer JSON. Now we need to run Composer require monologue monolog okay and let's open cmd here it is and let's run composer okay let's copy this and run here composer require monolog monolog that will install that, that will download and install that package in the project 
uh, in the vendor folder actually and it will also handle all kind of dependencies the, that that particular package has okay so you see it installed uh, two uh, packages although we have requested only one so we requested monolog but that monolog has actually dependency on psr log okay and it installed that second package also and if we have a look in the vendor folder we see uh, that monolog and as well as the PSR okay and if we want right now to use that monolog we can already use because we have once included that autoload PHP and we can easily use that monolog and as you see they are these uh, classes are written also in whites in uh, in namespaces okay so we can simply take that code and understand what's going on there Okay, let me comment this code and down below paste this. Okay, so we are uh, using monolog logger and some stream handler classes and this will obviously write in the log file. Okay, so let's create like a output.log file. Um, okay, so we are creating basically some instance and actually we don't care what's going on right here. Uh, that will write the output in the log file. Okay, so I have installed package and I can use it. And let's access that file in the browser. Okay, something happened and here we go. So it created that output log. And inside there we see some nice formatting, warning and error logs. Okay, here it is. We, were, we have written warning and error and they came right here. Okay, so that's just demonstration how we can install and use someone else's packages um, using Composer. And Composer, as I said, is absolutely mandatory tool if you are going to like uh, uh, start working on PHP. If you are going to uh, learn like frameworks, you have to use Composer. And it's not like a complex tool. You just need to know a couple of commands, and whenever you need the others, you can simply start googling it. Okay, so that's it and thank you.